Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today's my topic is treatment of minor ailments. So in today's class we are studying about what is minor ailments then how to provide the treatment of minor ailments. So coming to the introduction part, minor ailments may be the symptoms of certain diseases or the consequences of consumption of some food items, insect bites, animal bites, human bites or any accidental injuries etc. So most frequently found minor ailments that we may come across in our fever, cough, sore throat, eye discharge, ear pain, omitting, diarrhea, constipation, foreign bodies in the ear or nose in children, burns etc. So let us see one by one. The first one is fever. The common treatment for the fever is the first one is to assess the general condition. So we have to assess the general condition of the child or adult. Then monitor vitals. So assess the temperature, pulse and respiration. Then collect history. So collect the history of the symptoms like sore throat, headache, chills, abdomen pain, diarrhea, omitting etc. Then blood investigation. Blood smear uh, need to be collected in case of suspected malaria. Then cold applications. So provide cold applications to reduce the fever like example tepid sponge. Then medication. Administers antipyretic as per the physician prescription example paracetamol. Then oral fluids. Advice to take plenty of oral fluids. Then referral. Patient with continuous fever and not responding to treatment are uh, candidates for referral. So this is about the fever treatment. So next sore throat. So in most occasions under 5 children happen to report uh, so report with fever, sore throat and cough. So first assess the vital signs. Then collect the history. Then examine the throat thoroughly using a uh, like wooden disposal uh, spatula or torch light then note for redness ulcer or uh, any white patches then teach how to gargle with saline then teach how to prepare saline water like uh, add one tablespoon of salt in the glass of warm water then advice on importance of adequate rest and drinking more water and fluids then refer to hospital if sore throat persists refer to the hospital so this is about the sore throat next cough so first collect the history so collect the history of cough since when then related problems then throat irrigation a breathing difficulty etc then sputum test if sputum is produced assess the color order and any blood stain in suspected tuberculosis, collect the sputum smear on 3 consecutive days. Then advice for steam inhalation in case of cough and cold. Also advice to take adequate rest and fluids. Then earache. So first history collection. Collect the thorough history about the pain. Then examination. Examine the ear to know the reason for pain before making any attempt to clean. Then assess for the presence of discharge and swollen lymph nodes. Then find out about the associated illness. Then clean the ear as the institutional policy. Then instill ear drops as per policy. Then if uh, severe pain is there means administer painkillers. Next foreign bodies in the nose and ears. So when there is a foreign body in the nose or in the ear never try to pull. So only trained person is allowed to remove it and do not use any instruments to remove that uh, foreign bodies and never try to put water or oil into ear or nose. Then refer to hospital with proper advice. Next diarrhea. So collect history. So history collection should be thorough. So about the diarrhea onset, frequency, duration, or had any treatment at home or hospital then major associated complaints or any chronic diseases then observe for the specific signs and symptoms like dehydration if dehydration present means start oral rehydration solution and encourage plenty of oral fluids 
also you can use available home remedy based on the availability like uh, per boiled rice kanji tender coconut water lime juice or filtered tea water leaves what leaves that all things you can use for dehydrations or diarrhea then severe dehydration to be corrected in hospital so refer to hospital without delay next constipation so first collect that a uh, thorough history and if any associated illness then assess the pattern of work and mobility and type of the diet then advise the need uh, for movement in inactive people also advise to drink uh, plenty of fluids then eat fruits and more vegetables then advise uh, to eat eat uh, fiber rich foods uh, like example for fiber rich foods are raspberries coconuts then split peas lentils oats so advise the client to eat fiber rich foods then administer mild laxatives as per the institutional policy then bite under the bite there are three types animal bite human bite and insect bite so first we'll say about animal bite so when there is an animal bite so you have to wash that particular area thorough with soap and water then apply a loose sterile dressing and keep the extremity elevated then collect the information on last tetanus booster and record it then refer to the physician for evaluation of rabies post exposure prophylaxis especially in case of dog bite then topical antibiotics may be applied the animal should be observed for 10 days after bite so this is about animal bite next human bite the human bite is greatly at risk for passing infection so cleanse with soap and hot water then record the date of last tetanus booster tetanus booster is not necessary if last shot was within 3 years then collect a detailed history about the person who bit and the context in which the took this took place then refer to physician with a detailed note next insect bite so remove the stinger if seen and do not squeeze the poison sac found at the end of the stinger clean the area with soap and water apply cold compress this will help to relieve the pain and reduce swelling then observe for generalized allergic reaction like uh, uterine area swelling difficulty in breathing and anaphylaxis then keep the skin clean to prevent infection they need to be well developed referral system to refer in case if needed needed only so this is about bites next conjunctivitis in community there are many culturally believed practices for treating conjunctivitis so they are installation of breast milk giving hot uh, fomentation covering the affected eye with a cloth cloth dipped turmeric water etc so so we advise mainly uh, to irrigate the eyes with saline water and apply the ointment or drops as per the institutional policy then protecting eyes from the small uh, flies to prevent the transmission of infection advise to wear eye glasses and medication like painkiller uh, are administering to relieve the pain next cuts and abrasions so assess the cut or wound wash it with soap water if it is a small abrasion just touch with uh, uh, any also just uh, touch with a gentle in oil to or leave open to dry if it is a big in size clean with uh, povidin iodine and apply sterile dressing or apply sterile dressings with a tincture benzoin so this is about cuts and abrasions next severe bleeding so first apply pressure firmly with a clean bandage to stop the bleeding and keep the injured area elevated above the level of the heart in case of suspected fracture provide support to the part and elevate as appropriate be caution that the bandages does not disturb the circulation if blood oozes more try to apply more dressing however never try to remove original pressure dressing and refer for higher level care next convulsion so make the patient lie with head turned uh, to one side 
keep a spoon wrapped in cloth or a bandages roll between upper and lower teeth line in order to prevent from tongue biting then inform the relatives or caretaker about the patient then advise the relatives not to sprinkle water on the face and not to pour water into mouth and do not allow the people getting crowded around so this is about the convulsion so this is about the treatment of minor ailments hope all have understood today's class so thank you for listening my today's class uh, please uh, like share and subscribe my youtube channel thank you once again